everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus. And I've got to be real with you guys this week. Isn't it so easy to broadcast what we want to say? Isn't it so easy to think about ourselves? But what does that lead us to? Not good things. And Cassie's interview from last week has just been playing back in my mind about seek first the kingdom. And so I wanted to read to you all Matthew 6, 33 and 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I don't know what you're worried about. You might not be worried about anything today, and that's awesome because God is in control. But sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What are we doing today, and what are we doing for the Lord today? Do not be anxious. God provides for us everything that we need, and we talk more about that in the conversation with my friend Christy Overton Johnson. She's a world champion water skier. She's the founder and publisher of Victorious Living Magazine. She's on fire for Jesus, and she knows God's word. She speaks it while she's talking. It's such encouragement to be reminded that God's word is alive and well, and it's all about surrendering our everything to Jesus. Lord, don't let us get ahead of ourselves today. As Christy says, a former professional water skier, world champion water skier, don't get ahead of the boat. So let's seek first the kingdom of God. And one way you can seek first his kingdom is to stop and pray, is to stop and read his word, is to just stop. And put your hands up in surrender, thanking God for all he's done for you. He has done it all, everything from the smallest detail to the biggest thing in your life. God has done it for you. If you love him, he's going to do it for your good. No matter how bad it is right now, if you love him, he's going to make it all work out for your good, for those who love him, for those who are called according to his purpose. We know that from Romans 8, 28. So I pray this podcast is an encouragement for you today to use your position, no matter what it is, to broadcast God's love. Christy Overton Johnson, taking it away, talking to us from North Carolina. Let's go. How are you doing? What's new, Christy? Well, I'm doing great. I did just get off of a several day prison tour down in Florida. And it was awesome because that was the first time that I've been able to go in since COVID. And last year in 2020, I had so many events planned and they all like everybody's world just got shut down. But what hurt me the most of that is I know how much the men and women that are incarcerated rely on visits and rely on just those nuggets of hope and something different to kind of keep them going because there is so much routine. And when COVID hit, knowing that, you know, it's really been a year since I've even had a family member been able to visit. I just really can't even imagine that. So there was a lot of excitement. The first two days I got to go in in partnership with a ministry called Inmate Encounter, and they bring myself and other athletes in. If people don't know my story, I was a professional water skier for many years. I competed for 35 years and was blessed to be a world champion and world record holder in that sport. And the Lord took me from water ski lakes to prison yards after a visit with a friend. And so I get to go in as a platform speaker using the platform that I had as a world champion athlete and go in with other world champion athletes and performers. And we get to perform. I don't get to ski in there, but I get to tell about my experiences, but then relate them to my faith story and bring application and share my testimony. And, you know, the Bible says that the enemy is overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. Mm -hmm. And the power of stories is just amazing. So when I go in, it's wonderful because over those three days, I got to minister in person, speaking to over a thousand men at those places, but to see 
the faces, hanging on to every word, to see them holding that magazine, Victorious Living, that I've had the privilege of founding and, and publishing since 2011, to see those men holding that and waving it and they can't wait for you to, to sign it or to tell you about a story of how something impacted their life. And one gentleman was telling me how, you know, he spent two years in the security max and that's one of the toughest confinements. And he said, it was this magazine and the stories, the hope, not the magazine being some, you know, special thing that I've been able to create, but the right. anointing that's on the magazine, the gospel that is delivered, this, the Bible verses, because the Bible says that the word is active and it's alive. And so to see how the magazine just really helps people in such a real way, when I come home, it's like I'm fired up, even though I'm exhausted, I cannot wait to go to the press with the next one, which we actually did go to press today with issue two. We're a quarterly publication that's, and we're bilingual. So yes. it's just, and what a gift that is to be able, even flying home. And there was a lady uh, next to me who was speaking Spanish and to just say, hey, I got a, a magazine that I have the opportunity to publish and it's, it's bilingual. You read it one direction, English, flip it over and it's Spanish. And yes. it's, there's so much power in that to be able to minister to someone I cannot speak to. Mm. And uh, so that's just, yeah, I'm on a, a prison high. <laughs> there yes. is such a thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never heard that phrase before, but I just think that's awesome. I mean, just the stories that I heard uh, coming after that prison tour from Pat Avery, he was just telling me, you know, going with you to the prisons that someone came up to him and just said that they had given their life to Christ from reading this magazine. And so that's what you were talking about earlier about what God is doing through this magazine is real because his scriptures in it, you are praying over these stories. You're the publisher and the founder of this magazine and mm -hmm. you take your job very seriously. You're working for the Lord, a world champion water skier now, uh, you know, just given all that good energy that you know what it takes to be a world champion doing the same thing with this magazine. And wow, God is just using it for his glory. It's all for his glory. And anyone who reads your magazine, they can see it online, but you would know that it's all for him. And so today, in just this time that we have with you, Christy, I'm so grateful that we could do this again. You're on podcast number 43. So if you want to know more about Christy's story and her book, hit it. You can go to podcast number 43. Uh, but today, we know that if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably listening to other podcasts. And that's great. We want to direct you to podcasts that are broadcasting God's love, that are using this time and space that you're giving by downloading and subscribing and all of that, we want to direct you to people who are talking about God, who are talking about who he is, what he's done and what he can do through you and that he's coming back. And so if you could just tell us a little bit about this new podcast that's coming out, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Well, the newest thing about this podcast is there's a new host and her name <laughs> is Ricky. Stop it. <laughs> so after you did the interview with me, um, what was, would you just say episode 43? Is that what yeah. you said? 43 yeah. in November. So we had a good time and I just realized, you know, one of the missions that I have with this magazine is that the voice of this ministry be larger than my voice and it not be reliant on where I can be and what I can do. And it's not about me. It's about stories. And we had a great time. You and I did yeah. when um, you did our interview. And I loved your spunk. I love the way you love Jesus. And I love the way you just want to broadcast his love and, and the way you know the word. Mm -hmm. And it just would come up spontaneously. So I approached you and asked if you would uh, interview in a series of about eight to 10 podcast I think you've you've done about that many and we just finished you know you today you just finished today and really yes. what's interesting is you just brought up this young man who got saved in prison there's there's many people who have given their life to Jesus but also who are about to commit suicide but then they found the magazine or they were you know they were just at the end right and so this young man that you were talking about came up to Pat and he was a, a young Armenian, uh, young man. I, I can't imagine he's much older than about 22, 23. 
And I, you know, you don't ask what people's like, what their sentences are, what they did or anything like that. You just love them. And uh, he came up, he was very timid and a little bit shy, but he started telling Pat, that he picked our magazine up and he connected with it and he gave his life to the Lord Amen. because he saw an Armenian man on the cover, Roger yes. Munchian, who you awesome. just got off the phone with interviewing. Yep. And so it's, it's the, what people don't realize is everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Some of us are louder with our stories and we don't mind telling them, but the reality is when someone sat down and that young man read Roger's story and he looked and he saw someone that looked like him. And so that's one reason we try very hard to have all different types of demographic groups, yep. men, women, different races, different ethnicities, mm -hmm. because it's not just a, a white man's God. It's not just, you know, Christie's God. It's a God for everybody. Everyone. And yes. the stories are so powerful and so I in this magazine we want to have different stories you know you you interviewed um let's take Alex for example yes and oh, Christina these yes. Alex and Christina were just um, you, you did two Christinas all three yes. of those ladies served time in prison and all three are out and they're living victorious lives but you know I think of someone like Alex and she had had three abortions yeah. And so even after she came to know Christ, she could not let go of the guilt and could not actually receive the fact that God has the ability to forgive me. And he has already forgiven me. Even, you know, all I had to do was ask. And then he redeemed her life and gave her three beautiful children. I mean, that's a beautiful story. And I think yes. of people in prison and even maybe listening to you today who have done something in their past that they think that's unforgivable. And I love her story because even though it's a, it's a sad story in parts and it's right. a part of her life, I'm sure she wished she could go back in some ways and have an eraser. But then on the other hand, she understands the grace of God greater than you and I do. It's because, so true. It is so uh, true, Christy. And she is in love with Jesus. <laughs> yes. And this is what I love about Victorious Living podcast and about the magazine. The struggles that they're going through, like the surface struggle, talking about um, competition, talking about comparison, talking about um, jealousy, talking about um, greed the sinful nature, the shame, the guilt that they were feeling in that time, they share it. And then they talked about mm -hmm. how God replaced that with his love, talking about mm -hmm. how God replaced it with that sound mind, power, love, and sound mind. And it just, as we're re-talking about all these stories, the surrender that they had to make to be where mm -hmm. they are today will bring you to your knees because mm -hmm. they wanted it all. They wanted mm -hmm. it all. And who out there, I mean, just even listening to this podcast, who doesn't want it all? Well, mm -hmm. like they share in the podcast, I keep saying that, but it's just like, you got to listen to it. Each person, they're like, Jesus is it. Jesus is the yeah. answer. He will fill every thing that you're trying to get everything you're looking to in oh it's not the world it's jesus it's not of this world if you're looking to your left and right you're looking to the wrong place you got to look mm -hmm. up and you can be mm -hmm. in prison or you can be out of prison but it's still the same god and that is the message that they're bringing so um danny cox i want to talk mm -hmm. about him and then rachel barbeau i want to talk about mm -hmm. her um because they're both people who are on the front cover and mm -hmm. their stories are interesting. And I think people who are listening will just love them <laughs> and mm -hmm. want to connect with them. But Danny Cox, can you tell us a little bit about him? He was just out in um, this year's issue. Yes. And after I met Danny, Danny served time for many, many years in the federal prison. Something incredible about his story. I mean, there's so much about the the incarceration world, I just have never known, and I'm still learning. But usually it goes, you get arrested, you stay in jail, or either you're released on parole, and then you get sentenced, you're either released, pay your fine, whatever you do, or you go to prison after that. Okay. And so Danny's life, he, 
he goes and he gets arrested and he is arrested because he is going down a path of really trying to fill a hole of fatherlessness. Mm -hmm. And his father had died when he was a young man, but his father was also a very violent man. So when his father passed away, you know, he had all these questions. Why, why didn't dad ever tell me he loved me? Why, why did dad abuse me? You know, and at one hand, he was relieved his father was gone because he had abused him and his, his siblings so much. But then on the other hand, he felt guilty. This was right. his father. And then there was emptiness because he never heard those words. I love you, son. And so it is his life. And what people don't realize is we all deal with things in different ways. Yes. So if I needed to be fulfilled, I hit the lake more and I just strove to become a bigger champion on the water to fill the hole that was in my heart. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they have the hole, they turn to drugs or alcohol. And, mm -hmm. you know, with Danny, he turned to success. I'm going to be successful. And he has all of these different, um, he has these bars and things that he owns. And right. man, he just, he gets very successful he's like man I am jet setting in private jets I'm doing all this stuff and right. then he thinks he has it all but nothing ever satisfies and then he ends up in jail right. well he gets I, he gets a disease I think it was um, Lou Gehrig's disease while he's in jail and um all this well maybe it wasn't that maybe he got that in prison but he got sick but anyway in addition to that instead of, he never got released. He got transferred to like six or seven. I can't remember the exact number, a lot of prisons. I think it was like six or seven prisons before he ever had his day in court. He wow. was already in prison. And because of his medical condition that he had to go there and uh, be treated. So all during that time, he just kept getting transferred, transferred. Well, he had given his life to Christ early on in this. And so then he's walking through, he gets sentenced, and now he's in these federal prisons. And each place he kept getting transferred. And how many times he flew on Con Air? I thought Con Air was just a movie. It's an actual <laughs> flight where they're taking cons through the air to, you know, get to their destination. So every place he was, he didn't know anybody. Right. Every place he got, so you talk about understanding loneliness, right. every place he got, he couldn't get mail because no, his family members wouldn't even know where he was. So he really had to learn to rely on the Lord, to ask the Lord and pray to the Lord to answer his prayers because he couldn't do anything. Right. And so one thing he desired was a family and the Lord takes him a wife and the Lord enables him moves on like a warden's heart who starts these conjugal visits which we don't need to get real sexual here on the thing hey, but yeah he was able to yeah. unite with his wife if you know what we mean and yes she got pregnant he had a baby a son while he was incarcerated so it's just I just love the fact that our God is a redeeming God and you yeah. hit it it is surrender yes. every one of these people including myself and you came yes, to amen. a point where we stopped, we threw the arms up, not in like, I'm being arrested since, but I surrender. surrender. I'm going to wave the white flag. I quit Amen. running. And I saw a vision of this in church one day. I, the, yes. the lady uh, leading the worship said, lift your hands as a sign of surrender. And I, Amen. I all of a sudden, you know, I've watched a lot of crime television and prison ministry. So I just kind of saw two hands go up as if they're being pursued people lift their hands and what does that do it stops the chase and when you stop the chase God's goodness can overtake you and so mm -hmm. you are lifting up I'm going to give you my marriage I'm going to give you my prison sentence I'm going to give you my cancer I'm going to give you whatever it is that you're facing my future yeah this my my I don't have a relationship with you know, somebody, so you might say, Lord, I'm going to trust you with my spouse, my future yes. spouse. Maybe your child's going down a lifestyle. You say, God, here's my child. And you just lift it up. You give it to them. You quit trying to manipulate, quit trying to run, quit trying to fix things. And man, when you stop running, the chase is over. The goodness of God takes over and then things happen. And that's what I love about Victorious Living is because we get to see, these aren't people, we get to see the victory. We get to see God coming through, but these are, I will say, these aren't perfect people. 
Right. I am not a perfect person. Yeah. And, but as one you know. of the articles I just did, he said, cause he, he had, he'll be our next cover, Sean Ingram. And I think you, I he's think on you the interviewed podcast. Sean. Yeah. Okay. He's on the podcast and he'll be our cover in issue three. And so he said he had mental disease and all these things that he had gone through. And he's like, God showed me that I didn't have to be perfect to be perfectly used by him. To be perfectly and I just thought, used by him. Used by him. I just thought that was so powerful because we're, yes. none of us are perfect. Amen. And, you know, I try my hardest to make sure that every interview we do are people who really are walking the walk. People whose wives have really, they're not just looking to be on the, on a magazine. Right. Okay. These are people, but they're, I will say they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And so you could go research my life and find something I've done or, you know, see something maybe you don't approve of, but the reality is these people are being perfectly used by God and they are, their heart is perfect toward the Lord yep. in that they want to be used. And when they do mess up, they ask the Lord, Hey God, would you forgive me? And as I like to say, okay, God, let's hit it again. Let's go. Let's get let's out of go. this water let's hit it. Yep. and let's move forward. I was just thinking about this today. I was listening to a podcast and they were saying, they were sharing a story from someone else and that they were saying, um, this person was sharing their dream with them. And they were saying, one day I want to open up this center and I want to help people and da, 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 da. Basically it was one day and one day. And it's like, no, no, right now we're just going to broadcast God's love. Like right now, like where we're at, what we're doing, where our feet are, we're going to use our gifts and talents and abilities. We are called by God right now. And that calling starts right now. And so yeah. it's, it's just the same with what you were saying. I just, I'm so passionate about it. It's like, God has a fire in me to tell someone out there, like, don't be waiting for one day when that day is this minute is this second is right yeah. now. And he wants to use your hands for his kingdom. He wants to use your mouth for his kingdom. He wants to use the gifts and talents that he gave you for his kingdom, like for yeah. something that's bigger than any castle you could see on this earth, you know? And so mm -hmm. anyway, with that, uh, Rachel Barbeau, I mean, we need to talk about her too. I mean, there's like every single person has an incredible story, but Rachel Barbeau mm -hmm. could be somebody that a lot of people know if they watch football. Um, but yeah, she was on Sirius XM, the first female sports broadcaster, on Sirius XM and she was a sideline reporter and her story to Christ through adoption, through drug use that you have in the magazine. She's the front cover of it. If you could just tell us a little bit about Rachel, she's going to be on the victorious living podcast. Right. I, again, everybody could have a book written about them that I, I get to interview. They're just what a privilege. And Rachel is beautiful inside and she's beautiful outside too, but her spunk, uh, she, I think she might out spunk us. She just, she just loves the Lord and she yeah. is unashamed of it. Yes. But again, someone who has, um, it's, it's like Jesus says, you know, those who have been saved much or forgiven much love mm -hmm. much. And love much. Um, that's not to say her sin was any greater, but she, the thing is when people come to the Lord and they've really walked a walk where maybe they have some sort of details in their past that when they come to Christ, they realize the largeness of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And so I have had some things in my life that I wish I could go back for sure. We all have, yeah. but I grew up knowing about the grace of God. I grew up knowing about him. And so it took me for a long time to really realize the magnitude of God's grace mm -hmm. and that it is for everybody. And it's, it's the same grace that covers that little white lie as it did the abortion as it, cause we try to, you know, segregate all of this. And right. so all the, sin the sin. choices we've made. Yeah. And so I just love this, the same thing with her. She's so unashamed of the goodness of God. And again, it's, it's her coming to that place of surrendering that hole in her heart. Right. And here she had so much success, but at the same time, she was living a dual life, reaching to, to, to drugs and substances right. to fill the hole in her life. And she yeah. says, you know, every day I would need the bump of cocaine to give me the courage to go face the world and, and to, you know, do the work that she 
was doing on right. all these broadcasts and things right. like that. So it was her coming to that place where God just relentlessly pursued her. And that's what I love. It's like, we think we do something and God's like, I'm done with you. No, yeah. he is just waiting for us to stop. And he would show up here. He'd show up there. She, and, and she would see him, you right. know, not, not saying physically see, him, but she would feel his presence. She, there would be this little nugget of, Hmm. And then finally one day it's like the curtain opens and she's, you know, says it's time. It's time that I, I've tried everything else. And it's time. And when she did that, man, God has given her an ability to help people change the narrative of their life. And so she is working with athletes in colleges and pro levels and now in schools. And it's her desire to get it into the prison systems. These, yes. these workbooks and programs to help people change the narrative of their life. And she's yes. really big on helping people realize their identity that, that we are the, you know, sons and daughters of of God almighty. And right. she likes to say Kings and Queens we're royalty. And it's realizing yes. who you are, because until you realize who you are, you'll never walk in victory. That doesn't right. mean you walk around with your head up in the, well, it does mean you walk up with your head in the air because of Leviticus 26, 13 says, I am the Lord, your God who has broke the yokes, um, the burdens that are on your back. Now walk with your head held high. He's talking Amen, to the Egyptians. Sister. And so it's not walking around like I'm better, but it's walking around yes. saying, you know what? I am a child of God Amen. and I am made on purpose for a purpose. Yes. And I am able to do um, whatever God has asked me to do because God is with me and he's in me. Yes. And I do have worth because God created me. Yes. He doesn't create junk. And so I really love Amen. Yeah. I really love that. She helps people discover their identity. So, I mean, we could talk about each person on all, everybody's yeah. just going to have to go to the Victoria living podcast uh, and um, hear them for themselves. Like you said, that there's a couple, two series that I um, interviewed some of our past. Uh, we got some great, great people yes. on there as well um, yes. from past interviews jack murphy who's now passed away yeah uh, the great one of the greatest um prison ministers of all time but pulled off the largest jewel heist in american history so yes. we've got some amazing uh, matt manzari who uh was a, a world champion athlete who a good friend of mine in the water sports world was severely <laughs> electrocuted and he helps us move past our burn you know, he's got visible burns, but some of us have these burns in our heart where someone burned us and we can't move past them. And so we talk about that and using the scars for good and things like that. So we have two series already on that are already out. And then we have the ones that you're hosting. So I do invite everyone to, to come on and, and listen and help us uh, share victory with people. Yes. And for anybody listening to this who has family members or loved ones who are in prison and you want them to get the Victorious Living magazine, Christy, how do people get this Victorious Living to, you know, someone who they know in prison? Yeah. So first of all, I tell people they, you don't have to go to prison to get the magazine. It's delivered. Um, anywhere through our uh, publisher so you can go to victoriouslivingmagazine.com and you can subscribe it's $25 suggested donation for you to receive a quarterly uh, copy it, we're, we're quarterly but um, when you do that not only do you get one but you're giving one to an inmate that's on good. our list we have thousands that's of good. inmates that are requesting copies of victorious living and if you know someone if you have a loved one or maybe a, your neighbor someone like that or you know someone in our, your church their child is incarcerated um, just reach out to us and you can sponsor someone that you know and um, we That's also good. like to let people know that our magazine can be bought in bulk and it is the best witnessing tool because you can just hand it out to people. You can leave it places. And so we do make those available in bulk is that was one reason I created it too, because it's hard to strike up conversation, but it's easy. You're sitting on the plane and yeah. people are I always carry two or three in my bag. And right. I, I meet flight attendants and different things that now have the magazine. And, and it's pretty neat to see someone sitting there 
reading it and they got little tears in their eyes. Oh and- yeah. It's real stuff. And it, it's so relatable. It just drives me wild that it's like, Lord, I relate to each person so much. I mean, mm-hmm. yes. I mean, we just need him. I'm like, no joke. I mean, it's so easy to look around at this world and think that we're going to do enough. It's so easy mm-hmm. to think that, but when you just yeah. get down to the realness of life and people's stories, it's like, man, we need him so much that you just laugh mm-hmm. at the thought of thinking we can do it on our own. Um, yeah. So, you know, we always ask this question and I cannot wait to ask you this. What's a Bible verse that's helping you in this season? Mm-mm-mm. I will supply all your needs. Amen. I will supply, he will supply all your needs according to his riches. Yeah. Is it in Christ Jesus, Christ's glory? I, you know, when you step out and I want to encourage people, like you said, talk about earlier than now it's now's the time. It's right now. I, I had such a vision for this magazine for years. And finally I had a friend say that to me, get in there and think of a title and don't come out until you do. It's right now. The next day, get in there and, you know, come up with some type of plan and start writing. And you know, when you do that, you get off the dock. I always like to say, you don't, can't, there's no victory when you're standing on the dock. Remember yeah. I was a water skier. So you got to be willing to move out of the comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And when you step off that dock, God meets you there. Yeah. So I am, my constant reminder is that God will meet me. God will supply all my needs. He is a God. Ephesians 3.20 does abundantly more than I can ever hope for. And the same God that does it for me does it for you. And I'll just give you a testimony. We are so low on funds right now. And I went to press today, but the Lord supplied the $20,000 I need from someone I never had considered. And he, wow. he's like, not even going to mail it. Give me your bank account. I will wire it there today. Wow. And so, you know, you step out and you say, faith, God, I'm going to, I know God, I've seen it. I saw the prisoners last week on that prison tour that we started this broadcast with. And I know the importance of this magazine getting in those hands and it's saving lives. Right. And God has put something on your heart, Ricky, and other people's hearts. I just love how you use what you do in your everyday life with insurance. <laughs> to touch lives, to be a vessel of hope to people who are stepping into Medicare and, yeah. and they, they need help and Ugh. you get to help them through a very terrifying and overwhelming pro- process right. with ease I and mean, with laughter. But that's God. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what? I mean, he just did it. He just did it. He wove it together and he just did it. I mean, th- he just does stuff that when you say, okay, I can't do it anymore. He just does stuff that you wouldn't even think that he's going to use for his kingdom, but he's going to do it because he's going to get the glory in it. Like he's not doing Mm -hmm. it. I mean, yes, he's, he wants to take care of us. He wants to take care of us. You know, I can't say that enough. Like he cares for you, but like, he's going to do it for his glory at the end Mm -hmm. of it all, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. like, even in the funds that were raised today, I just, for whoever's listening, can you just encourage them about God's timing? I mean, you have, you learned that today in a, in a beautiful way. Oh, I reminded every time I I look at this wall here, um, in my office and I have every magazine cover that we've done and it's a million dollars worth of magazines. Mm. And I didn't have the money before I went to press for any of these. And so I'm just and it hurts sometimes it's it, your heart. I've, I've breathed in a paper bag before when I was hyperventilating. And, and you know what I did? I, I turned on Zach Williams song, fear is a liar. Fear is a liar. And I sang it and I sang it and I sang and I sang until I could breathe. And, um, oh gosh, fear is a liar. And mm. so you have to fight the good fight of faith. You have to step out in faith. That doesn't mean you blindly go forth, but you got to remember I was coming off that prison tour where I just saw people clutching those magazines, asking for more, thanking me from the bottom of their heart, lined up, like doing double takes when you walk in and smiling ear to ear and people I've right. never met because 
I mean, to a lot of these people, like Mr. Pat is the next of kin. When they pass, that's who they call. Mm. And same thing has happened to me. And so I know the importance. I know when you know your purpose, that's how I live on the high. That doesn't mean there's the low, but that means when I came out, I was like, I'm gong ho ready to go because I know that I'm in that sweet spot. And I know that I'm where God has called me. And Amen. you'll never know that if you don't step out in Amen. faith. And you, when you get to see him show up, then you, next time you're like, okay, he showed up then. He's going to show up now. I don't know when, but he's coming. And they're at press right now. And, you know, I still had my designer to pay, my editor to pay. And uh, now this afternoon we'll have the money to pay it. And so mm. praise God. Cause I, I just made a phone call to someone the Lord put on my, my heart. Wow. So that's it's amazing. Just, it's just really cool. So whoever is listening to this, um, you know, actually you're, I, I haven't told you this yet, but, um, I'm not going to say who says it because that's like the tease to listen to the podcast. But one of the guests encourages listeners to tie. And, and they, they really dive in. I mean, they talk about scripture. They just talk about the importance of tithing, what tithing has done in their life. And I mean, I'm living proof too, that if you give, um, God will just multiply it in ways that you can't even imagine. It's so weird about stepping out in faith with money, how it comes back to you, but only God can do that. And he's real Mm -hmm. and all the things. Um, but one of the podcasts, we talk about tithing a bunch and she really gets into it. But if you could tell us how to give to victorious living, that would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I do want to say we are not your, your church. So if you're going to tithe, please give it to your home church, but for a lot of inmates and their families and things, we, we are their home church, you know, we're discipling and we have thousands and thousands of inmates in our in our congregation I guess you say our, our church family yeah but um if you want to give a, a special gift or offering uh you can go to victoriouslivingmagazine.com mm-hmm. and there is very easily you'll see it a couple places give now and you become a part of our family and uh, on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of men and women um I thank you in advance every dollar that yes. is given creates a magazine and sends it in. Mm -hmm. And so you have to know that a dollar that that magazine goes in and it will go from hand to hand. It's passed around the whole door. And then it, unless they send it home to their family, which some do, but not all do, it gets tucked under a mattress or it gets laid over in a corner and then someone else finds it. And we still get letters from stories that were from years ago. Right. So a dollar goes a really, really long way. And yeah. some people say, I don't have anything, even a dollar, 25 you bucks are, for what you were talking yeah. about earlier. I think that's a really, a good thing it's that you cheap. were saying. And it, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cheap, but it's also just like very tangible of like, if you don't know where to start, here's step yeah. one, uh, $25 yeah. will get you a magazine into a prison, but also a magazine that you can you know, have mailed to yourself or mail it to a friend. And the Mm -hmm. articles are great. I mean, I've put these um, magazines in coffee shops, you know, I mean, just everything in them, the way it's designed is just beautiful. So thank you. The Lord is, is going to send it to places that we can never imagine because it's God's work through it. And he's using Mm -hmm. you guys for his kingdom. And so this has just been great. Um, Is there anything else you want to share, Christy? I just want to say, I love you and I appreciate you. I love you. You're amazing. Why are you just like such a world champion person? You're just, oh my gosh, you, you, are you go on and on. <laughs> Cause we take one to know other. one. How's that? There you go. <laughs> oh man. If the Lord has taught me anything in doing this podcast, it's that stirring each other up in the Lord is so rewarding and fulfilling. Mm-hmm. It's so exciting mm-hmm. because it's like, wow, God's doing that cool thing in you. Like, here's something cool that God's doing, but like only God can do it. He's just, he fulfills everything that I wouldn't even think. So thank you for your friendship, Christy. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me on broadcast his love. (laughs) Thanks, Christy. Uh, At the end of every podcast, we always pray, Lord, decrease our name and increase your name. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. 
Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy, Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys, and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs>